Hey guys, what's up? It's Katie Danger and we're getting ready to get started here. Um, I want to make sure everybody is muted. So I'm going to make sure you're muted because I don't want any of that feedback coming through. I will give it about another minute or so before we get started, but today is Mindset Monday. It's a perfect opportunity for you to set a foundation for a good week and We'll get ready to go and hopefully I can light some fire, get some motivation under you, whatever you need for your Monday, this is where it starts. So we'll give about another minute, wait till about noon, then we'll get started. Okay, I'll give it about another 20 seconds or so for people to jump in here. Got a few more people coming through. All right, guys, I remember I am muting all of you because I want to make sure that there's no background noise or nobody's dogs bark, you know, all those little things that come up. Make sure you stay muted. Um, I will have a point where if you guys do want to ask questions, what you'll do is go to the chat. There's a little chat box you can go to and then you can write everything in here. So it should pop up. I just wrote a little welcome note. But anyway, hey, let's go ahead and get started. So it is Monday, July 12th. Uh, I'm here in Omaha, Nebraska. I'm not sure where you guys are from. I do see Kelly's here. We got Randy and then somebody else's name I do not know. Anyway, I really appreciate you guys showing up. We got three people here. This will be recorded. It will be available on my YouTube channel. When this is over with. I like starting out on Monday with the right foot and Mindset Monday is just kind of a theme. I mean, lots of people do it, lots of fitness gurus, influencers, business advocates, whatever. You know, Monday is a great opportunity for us to set the stage for our week and set the vibe, make sure that we're on track, make sure that at the very least we feel like we can handle what's going to face us. So, with this week, it has started off very interesting. Uh, if you're in Omaha, you know that we had huge storms over the weekend. Um, lots of us lost power. Some of us haven't got our power back yet. I was going on nearly three days without power, but this morning I came home from my mother-in-law's house and we had power. So I'm very, very grateful I'm able to do this in my home rather than on my laptop or in my car or on my phone. So what I found out through all of this is I, I, I really, like, we are so so lucky the time that we live in. I, I know there's lots of challenges in 2021 and you know the internet itself post, uh, poses its own challenges. Um, there's lots of negative things that can be talked about when it comes to the world we live in today. But like, I can't imagine living in a time where there was no electricity or there was no uh, plumbing or running water. I mean, I don't know how people did it in like the 15th century, 16th century. I mean, even in the early turn of you know, the 1900s, how do they do everything? So I'm really, really grateful for where we're at, but it was incredibly inconvenient and frustrating to not have electricity all weekend. Um, you know, you just kind of, you just kind of plan that things are just gonna be the way that they are, and then when you get thrown off, it gets a little uncomfortable. So I've come a long way in my own mindset journey, and I looked at this, I'm like, okay, this does suck. Like, don't get me wrong. I'd rather have electricity. We all would, right? Nobody wants to be without electricity unless you're camping. And that way it's still planned and you're prepared for it. But I actually was able to sit down and write things that I was grateful for because we didn't have electricity. Um, we had been, one, I'm grateful that I have a mother-in-law who had a huge chest freezer. So on Saturday, we packed all of the stuff up that we didn't want to lose because we didn't know how long we'd be out of power. Uh, we packed everything up, we took it over to her house, and she let us basically squat there for the past, gosh, 48, 50, I mean, like almost three whole days we've been hanging out over there, um, taking up her space, invading her area. But not once did she ever, she ever make it seem like we weren't welcome. It was just, it was really pleasant. So I'm very, very grateful for her hospitality. Um, what a wonderful woman. But we were able to save some of our food, so I was grateful for that. So here's something though, I don't know about you guys, but I hate cleaning out the refrigerator. Like there's just stuff that was in a refrigerator from God knows how long ago. 
So one thing I was grateful for is like, hey, we get to clean out the refrigerator. Like once and for all, we get to throw the crap out, instead of hanging on to it, like hoarding whatever we want because we think we might need it someday. Stood out, done with it. Um, so we cleaned out the refrigerator. I cleaned it, like I sprayed it, I scrubbed it, I cleaned it, it smells and looks brand new. So I'm really grateful for that. I got an opportunity to do that. I would have absolutely no motivation to do that at any other time ever. Uh, and then we cleaned out our chest freezer. So that thing has been filled to the brim for God knows how long. And, you know, when we were packing stuff up, I just, you just don't want some things. Anymore. Why don't I even have this in here? So got rid of a bunch of stuff. Just grateful for that. And then another thing I'm grateful for. So I'm grateful for my mother-in-law. I'm grateful for finding time to like do house chores where you just would never set a time to do those house chores. But the third thing is, is I had so many admin things that I had and wanted to get done. And I just was putting off because I always got all these little fires. Like when you run a coaching business and a product-based business, so I got a service business and a product-based business, there's just always something to do. And there's always something like more important than, than these little fine tuning of things on my website, you know, the back end of things. But I got so much stuff done. I got a lot of creative work and writing because I didn't have anything else to do. Um, it was just really a good opportunity to find the things that I'm grateful for, uh, realize that, wow, you know, I've got all this time. I've been procrastinating for a while. Like it's, it's time to get this stuff done. So having time, having time. And after I just realized that I can only control what I can control. So I can only call the power place or I, I can only, you know, submit an outage once. That's the best I can do. Like I can let them know like, Hey, I don't have power. And then when it comes on, it comes on. Uh, being okay with not having control over some things because ultimately like even though we're so blessed and fortunate to have electricity or have the amenities that we have in 2021 you know really at any time like we might have to go without them uh i do not i do not know what it would be like to have lived in texas earlier during the winter where uh they had no electricity and they had no running water and, and they were trying to like melt water in their bathtub just for some just to wash their hands and things like we in Omaha had it much less uh, uncomfortable than other places have had it with their storms and we don't get hurricanes here. So the whole point of this mindset Monday was not to tell you about how my weekend went and dive in detail about not having electricity. The whole point was to realize that when you are in a position where there are some things you can't control and you just have to wait it out, get comfortable with the fact that now there's like other opportunities to do things that maybe you weren't doing before. Uh, when there's no noise of the electronics and all the distractions at home, like there are so many distractions at my home. I've got my guinea pigs. I, I you know, we've got stuff that I always need to clean. Like there's laundry to do. Got to make the bed, the house chores. But we didn't have, I didn't have any of that distraction. So I just sat down and I got some work done. So I'm really, really grateful for that. Um, but just looking over what can you control? How can you reframe it? to make it positive and then just absolutely refuse to, to be okay with self-pity. Um, I spent some time on Facebook the past few nights reading comments about people who still don't have power and I was one of those. And, you know, they're just wasting too much energy on being angry at the situation, being angry that the public power district hasn't got their power back on, angry at mother nature, angry at themselves, angry because they don't have anybody else they can rely on, you know, for a place to go. And that anger just isn't going to serve you well at all. So no matter what, no matter what uh, difficult situation you get in, just be grateful. Try to find the opportunity to be grateful. That's really all I can say. Just try and be grateful for anything. Um, we got some other people coming in here a little after the hour. Um, please stay muted if you're not muted already. Uh, I must have the settings a little wank, uh, wanky because I wanted to get that muted. Um, so hey, I wrote, I wrote down the top three things because I always think everything has to come down to top three things. Find one thing that's positive today. On a Monday, today, I don't care if your day is like the best day you've ever had or if it's the worst day you've ever had. Find one thing to be positive about today. One thing, okay? That's all you got to do. Just one thing. Be positive about it. Then be grateful about one thing. Remember guys, stay muted. I don't want to hear any background noise from you. Be grateful for one thing. So positivity is like, okay, you know what? Like the sun is shining. That's cool. Uh, my washing machine works. That's cool. But being grateful, I think is a little bit more deep. Um, it's, I'm not going to say 
uh, I'm not going to say spiritual because I don't want you to get a connotation that I, you know, lean one way or the other when it comes to religion, but it's a deeper existential feeling when it comes to gratitude. It's more of like, it fills you up. Like seeing the sunshine, that makes you feel positive, right? Makes you smile. Uh, smiling at somebody else usually makes them feel positive as well. But gratitude is a little bit more thought behind it and it has to have like a why. Um, so I am deeply, deeply grateful for my mother-in-law today. If it wasn't for her hospitality, because she didn't have to welcome us in. She didn't have to let us use our shower, her shower. You know, she didn't have to let us sleep in her beds and use her washing machine. I am deeply grateful for her hospitality and her kindness. It would have made this weekend in the past few days exponentially more difficult. So I'm very, very grateful. And that's what I mean by gratitude. Make it really mean something, okay? That's different than just finding a positive thing to smile about. Find something to be grateful for, something that means something so deep to you, you're like, damn, like if I didn't have that, it would have been so much more difficult to start this day or do what you wanna do with your life or reach your fitness goals or reach your nutrition goals. So that's gratitude. And then if you happen to not be in a place that is necessarily positive in the moment, I'm sure you have been in a positive place prior, whether it was an hour ago, two days ago, a week ago. It's your very best. Try and feel what it feels like to be in a position you wanna be in, okay? I do a lot of mindset work with the law of attraction. And they talk about two separate journeys that we're on in life. We're on this emotional journey and we're on a physical journey. And emotional, you know, that's our feelings, our thoughts. And then our physical is like where we're at right now. So like right now I'm in my basement, I got my workout room, you know, I've got my shirt on, this is my physical reality. My emotional reality is I am grateful, I am positive, I am excited that you're all here listening. Um, the problem with that is, is a lot of times this emotional journey that we're on, how we feel dictates how we see ourselves physically or how we physically feel. We've heard it before, you know, bad thoughts and feelings can create manifestations of sickness. So what I want you to do is I want you to realize that you may be physically in a situation you cannot escape right now, whether you don't have any electricity or you haven't lost the weight you've wanted to lose, or maybe you actually have a disease or sickness that has not been cured yet or, or resolved at this moment. But what you can do is you can alter the way that you feel about it. And you can say something as simple as, my body is beautiful and I know that it is capable of doing what I want it to do. So perhaps that's uh, something you could say as a mantra for a weight loss or a fitness journey. Um, what something that I would say when my power was out and I was feeling a little uncomfortable, it's like, I have I have my body. My body is, is whole. It is well. I still have a home. And I know that when the power comes back on, everything will be resolved and it will feel good. So what it's doing is you're just trying to, you're not trying to lie to yourself at all. You're just trying to change the way you feel about something. So then physically you can find more comfort in the moment as well. So that, that's ultimately what I wanted to talk to you guys about today was finding one positive thing. That's a little bit more superficial. Finding one thing to be grateful about that is deep, it is existential, and it really, really means something. And if it didn't exist or if you didn't have it, it would, it would mean a, a, a lot of discomfort for your life. And then number three, separate the two journeys you're on and do your best to, to feel your way into a better physical reality. It's not about lying to yourself about where you're at. It's just understanding the complicated nature of the journey and the process and being okay with it and telling yourself, you got this. So that's your Mindset Monday for the day. It was all inspired by a terrible storm that hit Omaha a few days ago, uh, but it has fired me up. It has set the stage for a great week for me, and I hope that you also have a fantastic week as well. Athletes, if you joined in a little late, got in here a few minutes after the hour, no worries. The replay will be available. I will put it in my coaching group uh, that you can get on Facebook. It will also be on my YouTube channel here in a few hours when I get it uploaded. If you have any questions, send me an email. I'm always available, katie at coachkatiedanger.com. And the last thing I'll leave you with is mindset is an incredibly important component of your fitness and nutrition journey. And if these concepts I shared with you are a little new to you, or you're kind of unsure how to navigate this space, or you just know that your mindset is a little bit, it, it just needs to be solidified. I want you to go and set up a call with me. Uh, I do have a 90 day coaching program. And one of the aspects of the coaching that, you know, you get your movement, you get your nutrition, there's community, there's the sleep and water, which we all know goes into, you know, weight, weight loss results, building muscle, getting the results we want. 
mindset is a crucial component to it. So go to metabolicamplificationformula.com, set up your call with me today, and let's dive in to the challenges that you have with your fitness and nutrition. That's what I do, I'm here to help. And you don't have to do this journey alone. You don't have to yo-yo diet. You can get the sustainable results you want now and then for the rest of your life with good lifestyle habits. And that's what I'm here to teach you as a coach. You guys have a fantastic Monday. Let me know if you need anything. I'm Coach Katie Danger. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful day.